Good morning, I'm David Wiegener. That's the 29th of August 2017, a Tuesday morning, and the time is 10.05 a.m. Okay, now I bring you a short game today, and uh, I, I'm white, and it's five minute um, chess, and it was played on um, it was played on Saturday. Okay, so here we go. And this is the main session for today. And so it's a wee bit instructive, um, but you be the judge, you can be the judge. But it's just how do you finish off in the um, with a king side attack? How do you finish it off? And this is one way I do it. This is how I did it on Saturday. Okay, here we go. So I play e4 and my opponent plays the Alakines opening. This is knight f6 is the Alakines. Now I don't wish to enter into the main lines which is e5 which is pawn up here. I play d3 so I decide to uh, play my bishop generally to I fend shadow bishop on g2. And just play quietly against it and and uh, play a King's Indian set up for white instead of that of black. I play a King's Indian set up for white with knight d2 etc and all that sort of thing. But anyway, you have a look. So now it could enter into a closed Sicilian with c5 on move 2 for black. G3, here we go, as promised. So don't play the opening terribly well. But it is five minute chess, so. Now if um, black plays here now, variation. then I can play this. And this is check of course to the to the king and also threatens the rook on e8. So black plays bishop takes bishop and I can't even do it. <laughs> I can't do this sacrifice. So that's a bit of nonsense there because I forgot the knight can take back. So I miss things. Everyone does. So um, we've got Bishop g5, and now we'll go the main line, queen g7. So go knight f6, check. So black could play f6 here, but they chose not to. Knight f6, check. So that forces bishop takes f6 for black, because otherwise they lose their queen next move. So bishop f6, bishop f6 came my response. Now white could be met now with rook e1, check, and swapping off a set of rooks, but black plays knight e6, quite a sensible looking move. Queen d2, now I'm all of a sudden eyeing up this, and knight g5, and queen takes h7 etc, or if the knight takes, then I just go queen g7 checkmate. So I'll go queen d2, pretty sort of simple, but very hard to meet. How is black going to meet it? <coughs> How does black actually meet it? Black could play here. Um, but then I can just... Wait. Black could play this here, and then I can just merely take it with just about my rook. We'll try that, eh? No, we can't. I'm 
talking nonsense again. Because if I take it with my with my rook and want to go queen here and knight here, my opponent just takes the knight on f3 and they'd be winning. Black would be winning. So here we've got this position here. So this is a passive move. It's all right in a way because it threatens to go here. I play G. So white's um, black's threatening to throw their knight on F5 and then I won't have an entry point for my queen on H6 to be able to play knight g5 as you will soon see I do. So I play g4 to prohibit uh, black from playing knight f5 and here black could play bishop f bishop f3 which would probably prevent uh, what happens soon and here too white could be met with bishop f3 stopping my knight from entering into the fray which is devastating to black's position but black played carelessly here and now I play knight g5 now if the knight takes on g5 okay because the queen can't enter it can't offer her support in defense of the h7 pawn so um black sort of looking on here they can't go knight f8 they can go there but they they're allowed to go there but it's not very good because i get this checkmate here okay so i'm just like um it's not a particularly great game i played here but after this move white has won so can you see what happens from here so this is a wee exercise for you can you see what happens to black after knight g5 can you see the strength of this move because surprisingly my juniors or the juniors that I'm coaching might play around with the pieces a bit and look around and they'll find they do find the things but I mean like they might be looking at this for a wee bit longer than I'm comfortable with and even myself so um, white is threatening queen takes pawn check on h7 not this pawn here because that would be silly but queen takes pawn check and queen h8 check mate because that would be no square so if the knight takes here on g5 then white ignores that and merely plays queen g7 check mate and I want you to see that in your head it's way better for you to see it in your head as I've seen myself saying lots of times already and I want to impress it upon you that if you um, find it with your eyes looking at it instead of um, moving the pieces around it's way better when it comes to actually playing chess as well as playing touch move all the time sometimes it will annoy you something if you do this playing touch move but at the end of the day it will hold you in good stead so anyway what white play was met with now was um nothing to do with what was going on there's nothing that black can do um, to defend the king because this pawn is locked with the bishop 
it's locked out of being able to move at all and so the threats are if the knight moves away it's queen g7 checkmate or queen h7 and queen g7 checkmate or queen h7 check and queen h8 checkmate and so on so if the knight moves away and takes the knight it's queen g7 checkmate in this case if the knight moves here it's queen g7 checkmate if the if this knight comes here white just ignores that and I will show you this one queen takes here king here now how does white progress white plays queen h8 check and the only move you can check is correct is knight back here and now can you find the what's called the called coup de gras or the coup de gras can you find the coup de gras which is this lovely checkmate okay not that I analyse that in the game because I didn't meet that in the game but that's probably um, black's best try because black almost defends don't they so anyway we go um, we went here didn't we now we go here and uh, it's showing the it's showing that is the, the next move <sighs> but it's it's playing 97 so that will just show you that one again okay we'll probably get the thing to happen now knight e7 is black's best defense really because there's none other than that helps them last longer but I have got a way better move than what I played before but I just wanted to show you the nice checkmate of queen h7 from here after 97 you can analyze it queen h7 and then I have also got queen f7 checkmate after queen h7 check king f8 queen takes pawn on f7 as checkmate and also I have queen h7 check king f8 knight takes knight on e6 check um, pawn takes or queen takes doesn't matter and queen g7 is checkmate I can show you these ones but we will just show you this one again because it's quite cute even though I can play queen f7 checkmate here or I can go knight e6 checkmate um, check and make next move and here so black's really helpless against white's forces in their position now I will show you another cute one but it doesn't work but it would be nice if it did is bishop here it doesn't work because the king can come here and run away can run away from here but this is no good because of the previous checkmate as well another sort of a interesting cool looking checkmate it actually looks quite picturesque so um, here we've got namely this one this one this one this one and now we have the one that we played before which is knight h7 checkmate not that I analysed that in the game so we will show I will show we I will show you what happened here now it says bishop g2 on the computer so we're just going to do that that's what my opponent played bishop g2 
and not here because I lose because of knight takes queen okay knight g7 wins my queen and thereafter the game as well I play simply queen takes check my arm um, check sorry king here queen here is checkmate that's the end of my session I hope you enjoyed how to infiltrate into white's white to infiltrate black's king's position or vice versa is what I was saying just before